what is going on everybody and welcome back to the Campbell Camels dynasty here episode two I want to go over the coaches that we have created within this universe and that way everyone has a sense and understanding of how far out across the country uh, HCAA and HFL has impacted so that is what we are going to look at right now. So let's go ahead and check that out. So up first here, we have defensive coordinator Reggie Kirksey. He was our, I believe, first ever uh, HFL Hall of Fame coach here. And we'll take a look and see who we have here. Uh, alma mater is from Houston. And you'll notice for some of these guys that if I was not able to have access to their player cards in the numerous Maddens that we have uh, expanded across, I just put them with the team that they were with professionally. So Reggie Kirksey here uh, was with the Houston Texans, in the HFL uh, franchise that we did have. And now he's going to make his mark in the HCAA ranks, what we will tentatively call it for now in this Campbell Fighting Camels dynasty. So we'll be monitoring these guys, uh, checking out their stats, uh, overall records, and you know where they place amongst other coaches here. So uh, looking forward to seeing everything that comes all the coaches' ways, where they move to, how far they progress. Will they become legends in their own right as coaches? Only time will tell. All right, so let's move on to the next uh, coach that is on the list. Okay, so up next here, we have Shannon Harper, defensive coordinator. And he spent most of his career as a Buffalo Bill in the HFL. So he's going to make his mark as well. And he was from Texas A&M from what uh, I could gather. So that's why it's showing as his alma mater right there. Defensive style is going to be a 4-3 multiple. All right, and staying within the same uh, concept here, we will have... Xavier Woods. All right, and staying within the MAC this time, we have offensive coordinator Xavier Woods. Spent his time here at uh, Notre Dame, actually. And now he gets a crack in the coaching ranks. Moving along to the Pac-12 here. In California, we have a tight end who made a big impact in the HFL. He gets a crack in the HCAA here. John Durango. And probably making the biggest impact so far, the most established of them all, is Sheldon Dinkelberg, defensive coordinator from Michigan. Be interesting to see if he gets a head coaching gig before any of the other coaches do. With him being a larger name, he'll have a larger pool to choose from for sure uh, if his name is called upon to be a head coach somewhere. So keep an eye out for Sheldon Dinkelberg. All right, and back to the Pac-12. This time Eric Crum, Washington's defensive coordinator. All right, now Central Michigan offensive coordinator Bailey Pleacher. Spent his time at uh, Michigan, actually. So we'll go ahead and switch that over to Michigan. Must have forgot that. But uh, he had a big impact with uh, Detroit and made a name for himself and was a top-rated recruit, number one overall recruit when he was a player, a prospect, and... He made Michigan his home and then was drafted by the Detroit Lions 
And now gets a opportunity here with Central Michigan as the offensive coordinator. Moving on to the Sun Belt Conference now. Defensive coordinator, Koneka Dotson. Wrecked havoc on the field at Ole Miss. Wrecked havoc in the HFL. And for better or worse, he will wreck havoc at Southern Miss. I say that with a chuckle. There's a fun storyline about that, guys. Uh, check out the Discord if you want to learn more about Koneka Dotson because it, it is quite the unique story here for Koneka. But best of luck in his coaching endeavors. And up next at offensive coordinator, Tristan Delmonico, a quarterback in the HFL, uh, transferred to San Jose State um, for his final year before his name was called upon in the HFL. And now he gets a chance to be a quarterback whisperer, someone who's been, you know, at the highest rank possible. And let's see if he can rally in some recruits, especially on the offensive side as the offensive coordinator here. So best of luck, Tristan. Up next, we have Luke Creighton, offensive coordinator, Middle Tennessee State. A really solid uh, running back, uh, a great one-two punch combo, either as a starting uh, running back or more of a power back set, how he was ideally used in the HFL. Didn't have top-end speed, very balanced, uh, leaned more on his power for sure. If you were to classify him as like a specialist in one side, it would definitely be on the power side. So, uh, best of luck to Luke Creighton. And at Wake Forest, Zorvos Mavaroth, a quarterback at the University of North Carolina when he originally signed, was with the Dallas Cowboys in the HFL universe. Didn't quite get to that starting role. Uh, he had a short stint opportunity in one year. Uh, Dallas opted to go another way, however. So now he's making his uh, name and hopefully his HCAA legend status. And at a pretty good school to start off with here at... Wake Forest, so best of luck, Zorvos. Right, and now at Hawaii, defensive coordinator, Jayshon Stockton, a stud cornerback in both the collegiate ranks as well as the HFL ranks. And we'll see how he turns out as a coach as well. Best of luck to Jayshon. All right, and for Arterius Galmore, He's going to be starting at FIU. Uh, originally, alma mater is Kentucky. And much larger of a frame um, that we could control in the HCAA and the HFL ranks. But as a coach here, this is the most uh, comparable frame that we had. But this guy was a monster on the field 6'10 260 pound pure muscle was a vertical threat um, at the tight end position and wreaked havoc in the HCAA and the HFL ranks best of luck to Arterius as he begins his coaching career at FIU and up next we have quarterback Rex O'Keefe Rex O'Keefe was a quarterback at Oklahoma, and in the most recent version that we have of Rex O'Keefe, because he got to play in two different versions of HFL, um, he has his stint with the Cincinnati Bengals and was a commonplace name there and contributed to pretty consistent playoff runs for Cincinnati and now uh, looking to maybe... Hopefully, one day do the same. Maybe not at Tulsa, but somewhere down the road. So, looking forward to seeing the development of Rex O'Keefe. 
as a offensive coordinator at Tulsa. And up next we have defensive coordinator Hayden Carmichael. And fun story about Hayden Carmichael here. He actually started as a linebacker here with Nevada from day one and was able to come in as a linebacker as well in the HFL ranks and was a good rotational linebacker, never really became that stud linebacker, but someone you could rely upon um, in different types of schemes. Definitely more of a um, run stopper than he is in pass coverage, Uh, but he gets a opportunity back with Nevada. And let's see how that opportunity flourishes down the road. So welcome Hayden Carmichael. Up next we have Brian Street. And he will be a offensive coordinator with Appalachian State. Was a starting quarterback with the University of North Carolina. And in a very similar situation, I believe, to uh, Zorvos that we introduced earlier at Wake Forest. Um, App State, a really great program to you know get started here. And best of luck to Brian Street in his coaching endeavors. All right. And last but not least, we have Marshall Hendricks, a stud HFL, soon to be legend, actually and had his start at the University of North Carolina, and now has an opportunity to be the offensive coordinator with Fresno State. So best of luck to Marshall Hendricks. And guys, that is all the coaches that uh, we are introducing and keeping up with. Uh, I will have an updated file, and I will be posting that into the Discord. So if you are not part of that Discord community, guys, um, please be sure to um, click the link I will put in the comments. YouTube won't allow me to put that in the uh, synopsis, essentially, of the uh, video. So look for that in the comments. And come join in and be part of the community. So without further ado, now we're going to sim... Uh, year one, and we're going to see how Campbell does in their first year sim, and we'll kind of get a recap from all of these coaches. So let's go ahead and get that one started. All right, guys, and as we start this season here, we will be facing off against the University of North Carolina coming in as a top 10 team. And this team is not the University of North Carolina you are familiar with. Uh, This is one that I have carried over from um, my original uh, Dynasty team. I just inputted all the same information here. So that's why you're going to notice names that you have never seen before. All of these guys that you see here, uh, Derek Ridgway, Jaden Marable, Brandon Samuel, they all became HFL uh, players, professionals. So this is going to be a really tough test here for Campbell, and we'll see how we fare against the University of North Carolina. And also, while we have the opportunity, I'm going to go ahead and show you what our schedule looks like here. So our schedule, we're at University of North Carolina. We're going to be for our first home game against Old Dominion, follow that up with West Virginia, East Carolina, at Louisiana, at Miami, Wake Forest. So we will be facing off against Zorvos, if you remember the offensive coordinator there with Wake Forest. Take a trip to the Swamp in Florida, go to Coastal Carolina, UAB, Duke, and then our last game will be at Central Florida. So a lot of North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. That's really where we're trying to make a statement there in the southeast states as we try to expand our recruiting. All right, guys, so our first game that we had with this Campbell dynasty, we lost 52 to 35. Uh, The points that Carolina scored, that sounds about right. The amount of points that we put up, however... I was kind of shocked by that. So 
maybe some better things to come as we go up against lesser talent there around the universe. So something to keep an eye out on. All right, so our first opportunity to try and pick up a win here. We're actually rated a little bit higher than Old Dominion. So we'll see if we can pick up our first ever win. We put up 35 against a top 10 team. Uh, let's see what we can put up against Old Dominion here in week three action. Oh my goodness, guys. The Campbell Camels have picked up their first ever win here in the FBS against Old Dominion. It was on a score of 20 to 17 here. And we'll check out the stats there. It took a Campbell touchdown with 232 remaining in the game. Held on to claim the victory there, 20-17. to And because Campbell has won their first game, we're going to be able to utilize our skill boost. So I've, I figured another restriction I could put on myself is for each win I get, if I have a coach unlocked, I'll be able to do that for each position. So head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Since we had one win, I can boost my offensive coordinator once. I can boost my defensive coordinator once as well. So you'll be noticing that as they uh, pile up for the upgrades available because I don't see that many more wins coming our way. But congratulations to Campbell's first win and at home nonetheless. So great start for Campbell. All right, guys. So we are going to be facing our second top 25 team on the year, and that is the Raging Cajuns here. And let's see if we can pick up win number two on the year in a upset against the Raging Cajuns. We couldn't quite get the job done, but we did get two commits at the quarterback position and then one defensive end. So it was a close game. And we did get two uh, commits at quarterback, one at edge rushing. So three commits to start for the Campbell Camels dynasty. And again, one star prospects only until we still start building more reputation. Guys, it's not getting any better. The Campbell Camels are now one and seven. Recruiting, pretty decent. Um, we are getting who we want as far as one stars go, but... Again, this roster is probably going to regress more than it is progress. So we'll see the toll that it takes on there. And let's take a look over at the recruiting ranks for just a quick second. So Campbell, although is, you know, middle-ish of the pack, like bottom half, we're 77, 18 one-star commits. So uh, just giving people an opportunity. And you'll notice some duplicate um positions really trying to instill that competition so really going to battle out for those uh starting spots and then who ultimately will have backup roles as we progress through this dynasty campbell is still sitting at one win on the year but a big opportunity to try to get a in-state win here against duke university and definitely outmatched in this, but Duke is three and seven. We're one and nine. Not really much to play for here for either team. So can we get a victory against a in-state school and try to get the upper hand in recruiting down the line? Let's see how this one plays out, guys. We don't get the win. However, we do get uh, more commits uh, for our team here. And lost the game by uh, a touchdown. So we'll see if we can try and pick up win number two, the last game of the season against Central Florida here. Again, outmatched, but that is to be expected. And uh, let's see if we can get an upset win here. We do not get the win. 1 and 11 is where we will finish. And let's take a quick look at the top 25 and see who we have there. Ohio State, North Carolina here at number two. Again, this was a team that um, is my version of North Carolina, so kind of surprised to see them at 12-0. They definitely did not do that 
um, against, well, when I was not usering them, but like just sim managing them, kind of like I'm doing with Campbell right now. And uh, very interesting to see them uh, up so high. Let's take a look at the rest of the top 25 here. Western Kentucky at 11. Very surprising there. Coastal Carolina, a team we faced off against, is a top 15 team. And that'll round out your top 25 with Hawaii. 11 and 1. And <laughs> way at the bottom there. So you have to take a look there and see what that schedule is looking like. Not a very strong schedule. I'm seeing a handful of teams with a winning record there. And guys, uh, now that we're in the conference championship week, I kind of wanted to recap how the season went for the Camels. And started off the year with a loss, 52-35. to 35, Beat Old Dominion, 20-17. Lost by 20 to West Virginia, who ended out the season going 4-8. and eight. Kept it close with a, another top 25 team, East Carolina. Lost by 10. Lost to Louisiana in overtime, 31-28. to Got blown out by Miami, 52-7. to And another overtime loss to Wake Forest this time, 23-20. to Florida, we lost by three scores. Coastal Carolina, uh, lost 42-14. to UAB, another top 25 team we went up against, defeated us 31-12. to Duke, that was a one-score game, and then Central Florida. So Florida really did put a whipping on us here. Um, kind of surprised we didn't get blown out as much and more often. But again, we'll see how this roster progresses or uh, degresses or, excuse me, regresses. Um, as we move along here into the conference championship week, combined opponent record 88 and 56, a pretty strong, um, record there for opponents, I would say. The conference championship week, Western Michigan, uh, at Miami, Ohio, Iowa State, taking on Cincinnati, Southern Miss, so Koneka Dotson, the defensive coordinator out there is in a conference championship in year one of the sim. Florida taking on Alabama. Memphis taking on Tulane. New Mexico taking on Hawaii. And NC State taking on the University of North Carolina in the ACC championship game. And Ohio State taking on USC in their conference championship week. And let's see how this sims out. Taking a look at the Heisman Trophy winner here, Bernard Robinson from Kentucky. This is another HCAA Dynasty roster that we did bring in. So congratulations to Bernard Robinson. And Derek Ridgway coming in at number two with... Uh, the University of North Carolina, and some IRL players, as you may have already noticed, for the bottom three. So taking a look at the bowl season, we'll kind of see where some of our coaches may or may not be, keeping a tab on them as we do kind of like a slow scroll, that is. Um, Will Hyde, Eastern Michigan, uh, offensive coordinator there. In his first bowl game, the Arizona Bowl, Miss taking on Michigan State. So, Koneka Dotson, an opportunity there. Michigan taking on Florida State. And uh, Sheldon Dinkelberg, the defensive coordinator there at Michigan, opportunity to try and get a bowl win year one. Houston taking on SMU, so Reggie Kurtzy. The defensive coordinator, uh, hopefully to get a win in the Armed Forces Bowl. Fresno State taking on Arizona. So Marshall Hendricks, offensive coordinator there. Also, Washington, 
as well. Eric Crum, the defensive coordinator. And then at Ball State, Xavier Woods, the offensive coordinator, taking on Appalachian State. So some custom coaches facing off against one another. Brian Street, the offensive coordinator with Appalachian State. And Xavier Woods, they we just mentioned, the offensive coordinator with Ball State. And then last but not least, it'll be Ohio State taking on North Carolina in the national championship game. I won't be doing the college football playoff mod during the year four sim. And reason being, we just kind of want to move this along. Um, we will start doing the college football playoff mod um, as we do our first actual year with the Campbell Camels. So this is just year one. So we have three more years to sim through before we start instilling the college football playoff mod. But an opportunity for a team that I had created, very surprised that they're sitting here at 13 and 0 to be honest with you, uh, but taking on Ohio State, and we'll see how the year fails, fares out for the bowl teams. All right, so let's see how the bowl games played out and how that impacted our coaches. So Eastern Michigan gets their win, 36 to 31. So congratulations to Will Hyde, the offensive coordinator with. Eastern Michigan to pick up a bowl win and finish the season with eight wins. And up next, Michigan State taking the victory over Southern Miss. So Kaneka Dotson will have a bowl loss to start his defensive coordinator tenure. But congratulations to getting into a bowl. Michigan blanks Florida State there. So a big statement there for Sheldon Dinkelberg, and we'll see if his name gets called upon in a head coaching gig, potentially, as they blank Florida State. Houston taking the loss to SMU in the Armed Forces Bowl, but again, congratulations to Kirksey, at least making a bowl. Fresno State takes the loss to Arizona, so Marshall Hendricks will start his uh, coordinator tenure with a bowl loss as well. Forrest gets the victory over South Florida, so Zorvos starts his bowl tenure with a victory under his belt. And Xavier Woods gets the better of Brian Street in a low-scoring affair. 14 to 13, a one point victory for Ball State. So Xavier Woods gets the bowl victory, while Brian Street gets the bowl loss. And guys, the University of North Carolina is your national champions on a score of 31 to 24. Gotta look at the stats there. North Carolina. Had the go-ahead touchdown victory there. A 14-yard pass from Derek Ridgway. And North Carolina ends their season 14-0, number one defeating the Ohio State University. So guys, that will do it for this episode of the Campbell Fighting Camels. A 1-11 road, a tough road that is for the Camels in their first year. But uh, looking forward to see what year two brings us. I will recap our recruiting in the next episode as we sim to and through year two. And we'll see how all the coaches fare and see if they have moved on elsewhere in the next episode. So thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Um, and thank you very much for tuning in to this episode. Thanks all. I'll see you next time.